Coming up on this episode of the Preston North End Weekend Warm Up, we've got the latest news from Preston North End's Academy. We'll catch up with Brian O'Neill ahead of our trip to Derby County. And we've got an exclusive chat with Simon Grayson about that game on Tuesday. All that and so much more only on the Preston North End Weekend Warm Up. But first, the news that Declan Rudd has officially retired from football this week. Everybody at Preston North End, and especially here at the weekend warm-up, send our thoughts and regards to Deck, and we will hear from him over the next week or so. But in the meantime, Greg Cunningham has been speaking to I Follow p &E and gave this lovely tribute to his teammate and friend. We're hugely disappointed for him. Um, you know, Deck's a great lad, great player, and I know he's he had a lot more to give to the game um, so it'll be a tough time for him um, in that transitional period finishing uh, you know obviously quite quickly in football you know I think he's the same age as me so plenty more life in him and um, yeah hugely hugely disappointing for him but I know the type of person he is that he'll he'll um, really relish the next chapter in, in his life. I think sometimes as you get a little bit older um, you know you realise that your time's kind of coming to an end and um, but but for him, still still quite young, and like I said, it has a lot more to give to the game. Um, and when that's taken away, that can be tough to tough to take. And I'm sure it it has been a, a mentally draining time for him to get his head around the news. And um, yeah, we're we're all good for him, but he knows that um, you know we'll always be here for him. Right, let's look ahead now to this weekend's match against Derby County, the trip to Pride Park, and we caught up with someone who's played for both teams. Obviously, it looks Preston North End more, but Brian O'Neill still keeps his eye on Derby County. I think you're, you're that kind of affinity with, with most clubs that, that, you actually, that you actually played with. You know, and it, um, it's a great club, Derby. It's, it, it is a, it's, it's a really good club. It's a big club. There was a lot of good people. People uh, there, a lot, a lot of them are still still there, there as well. Like the uh, kit man, uh, Dave, Dave, who's uh, still there. He's been there for years. He's a cra cracking guy. Uh, they've been against the odds this season. I think that's that's probably the understatement, perhaps, of this conversation. How have you rated the job that Wayne Rooney has done, in spite of all of that? I think he's done an amazing job. <laughs> if you looked, I've actually seen quite quite a lot of the games on TV. Um, they play. They've been playing a lot of good fo football. I know the. I know the results recently have, have have not been as good. But uh, before they were on a hell of a run, lost a couple of players during the sort of January win window, which which really sort of just I think that maybe took the window out, out of the sail just just a touch. But when you see how they try to play the game, they're always trying to be closing down. They're trying to get forward. They're trying to score goals. Possession based, but possession with a pur purpose. Sometimes it leaves them open at the the back, but I think it's the kind of football that most that most fans would like 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 to see their own clubs play. I interviewed uh, Wayne Rooney quite a few times as a player. As a manager, mm -hmm. he's holding himself brilliantly, isn't he? Yeah, he's, he's. I think the biggest thing about it, Simon, is that you, you can see his players are actually not only are they playing for, for the club, but they've, they've got a belief in what they're being asked to, to do. Um, whether they've got the players now now to do that, because they've lost a few, and then, well, just in January and a few just in the sum, summertime before. But still, he's, they've, where they've been really good is that the Derby have been bringing on a lot of good young players over the, over the past few few years. They really have been bringing players through. The, their academy there has been really working really well. Um, to the extent now they've, 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 got, they've got a couple of crackers in and in, in, in about the team right, right now so that that's that's helped the club immensely you know and I'd imagine being a young player coming through and you've got Wayne Rooney as your manager you're, you're going to listen to him aren't you so that's Derby County as far as mm. uh, the next football club that you play that how are we doing in your eyes at the moment because I know you watch us as, as often as you can yeah, I've been to a lot, lot of games. Uh, this year, I've actually, I've actually been to a lot of games. I've really, I was really impressed with the game against Nottingham Forest. I know it was a, I know it was a nil, nil, nil draw, but for the first time for a long time, it, you, you're watching a team. You're thinking, geez, they know what they're trying to do here. They really know what they're trying to do. Um, Nottingham Forest are a good, good team, but they, they just couldn't get going against Preston. It was, 
it was good to see them really closing down all over the pitch and high energy and trying to get forward. It's, it's something that I do get frustrated when teams are just all this passing and can try to be all in control all the time. It's it's good to see that um, when they've been playing at home, there's there's been some tough tough games. There's been some um, ones that you're kind of thinking got away with that that one there. But then when there's been other teams come, let me see um, Bournemouth uh, came as well. I was at the Bournemouth game. Um, went away before the winner was scored, mind you, so I, I hold my hand, hand up there. But uh, no, it's actually shaping up nicely. It's shaping up ni- nicely. And it's um, I'm pretty sure Preston will be going to the game. They'll be going to the game on Saturday, thinking that they can get three points. From one derby to another then, because uh, Tuesday night, we all know the emotions that surround a derby game. More so, perhaps, because it would have been Sir Tom's 100th birthday. Um, so we'll be celebrating that on Tuesday night as well. What You, haven't, you didn't play in the Preston uh, derby game, um, but you have played in an old firm game, which I'm guessing was quite intense. Yeah, really intense. Yeah, I've played no fun games, and some of them went, some of them went well, and some of them didn't go so well. Let's just sort of put it at that. But yeah, the the, the derby games, it's it's funny because I, I I think you get the likes of the derby games, you get the Celtic and Rangers game, which is obviously massive. It's 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 a a fixture sort of all on its own. Um, played in the um, Forest versus Derby County one, which was. Yeah, Midlands are kind of that kind of way. That's not really, they're not really that. I didn't really find them that intense, to, to be honest. Um, but the further north you go, I mean, I know that you've got the the Blackburn Burnley one, which is a really intense derby. But the Blackpool Preston ones, it's a there's it's a real passionate, passionate derby. There's, there's 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 not a lot of there's not a lot of love between those 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 two clubs, and it's um, I went to the one at um, Bloomfield Road. I think it was two thousand and seven, two thousand and eight. I might be wrong there. Uh, when Neil Miller scored in pre- Preston, two thousand eight, yeah, two thousand eight. Sorry, was a brownie. It? Don't forget yeah. Chris as well. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, it was a three-one game. Um, pre- Preston went to win, but it was more than how intense the rivalry is. It, it's it's. I think the further south, south you you go, then they don't seem to have that same intensity. The northern derbies, and then you go, then you go to Glasgow, of course, and it's mental. But it's um, it's such a big game. It is a real, real big game for both clubs. It's it's uh, it means a hell of a lot to them. When you played in them, how do you keep as a player? How do you keep your emotions in check, or do you let them sometimes? Are you, do you let them be guided? Well, it used to be. To be to be true, truthful, when when I was playing the old firm games to start with, um, the referee used to let a hell of a lot go. It was almost like it's a derby game. Let's let's go. Um, I'm in a group, group now, and there's some ex Rangers players on it as well, ex Celtic and Rangers players on it. And little Charlie Miller keeps on talking about the time I took him out after about thirty seconds, I nearly put him into the <laughs> into the advertising balls. But it was like. It was just part of the game. There was no, there was no yellow card. It was like, all right, that's your first one. Um, and it was loads used used to get let go, but it was part of the derby. It was almost like hey, it's a derby game. What do you expect? You know, and, and it's um, so I'm not wanting the ref, referee to let players get get injured, but when it's a derby game. There's a lot of passion there. It's 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 not a bad thing to to sort of have it on the pitch. It's more important that it's on the pitch rather than in the stands, you know. So it's um, I hope the referees, I hope the referees strong, but actually is sensible and lets a few things go because it's what it's what the punters want to see as well at times. Well, plenty of you got your fix of football here at Exton this week, turning up for a central league game against Accrington Stanley, and were probably pleasantly surprised by the number of academy players who got their chance to shine in front of the manager, Ryan Lowe, who has also admitted this week that some of them may get a chance between now and the end of the season in the first team. We'll hear from Aaron Bennett in just a moment, who's just come back from a bad knee injury and is touch wood doing well. But let's start off with the academy manager, Nick Harrison, who admitted that it's moments like this that are a great opportunity for the young lads to step up and shine. It's just a real good opportunity. 
Um, I mean, that's that's what the young lads want. You know, we've we play week in week out in the Youth Alliance League, and you know the, the, we know that lads are always looking at the reserve games and am I going to get my chance? And since today, you know, 16 lads in the squad and and uh, Lord's got opportunities to play. So in, in front of a decent crowd um, against a really experienced Accrington team and in front of the first team uh, manager and, and, and his staff. So it's a fantastic opportunity for him. Well, you've used the word opportunity a couple of yeah. times there. And the manager mentioned in the, the meet the manager this week that, you know, the young lads would get an opportunity. So how does it, what does that mean to the lads? What does that mean to you when you hear the manager saying that? Yeah, I think, well, that's exactly what you, what you want in academy football and youth development. You know, there's, there's got to be some kind of a pathway, but, you know, the, the, you, the players are not just going to make it, you know, just just like that. They've, they've, they, they need a, an opportunity and today they've got that. And I think certainly since the manager's come in, you know, the, the amount of reserve games that our boys have played in, you know, has been really good for them. And, and, and obviously the lads need to take that and they, and they need to take the opportunity. And in terms of the season so far, in terms of the league season, the Alliance League season so far, so far so good. Yeah, I, you know we, we've, we're obviously top of the league, which you know we we've, we we hear about and we talk about, and we're in a cup final. Um, but you know what's what's most pleasing is is the performances that the players put in week in week out. And you know for me, uh, and I've said this on a number of times, youth development is is about progression and, and development. And um, we've seen a number of players, you know, you know Mikey O'Neill, for example, you know probably uh, had a, a tough time in his first year as a scholar last year but if you look at him now he, he looks a completely different player and, and and that's that's what's important about you know the the games that we play on a, a week a week to week basis and and the, and the training sessions so but you know you're right it's, you know so far so good and you know we want that to continue you know it'd be great for the boys to win the league and and win a cup but I suppose what's more important for us is, is days like today, where you know where the boys you know get in front of the the manager and his staff and and can and can try and you know play at that next level. And you mentioned Mikey there and, and the progression that he's made in a relatively short time where he's gone from there to, to yeah. there. Is that is that good for you and the lads? It's good for you in terms of seeing that progression, but good for the lads in terms of all right. Well, we need to. Yeah, it, it's good to, for the other lads to see that. You know, we we've got a lot of players in our academy from from being nine up to kind of 18 even some of the younger pros now as well so you know if they can see somebody like Mikey O'Neill who's been with us since eight year old you know in terms of where he is right now and it's not just Mikey there's another number a number of other players as well but um, I, you know I certainly think it's good Mikey's a good role model for, for everybody because you know that's what development football is all about you're not going to get it right you know straight away and every credit to Mikey for, do, for doing that. And just finally I, I know that it's not the be-all and end-all in terms of the winning stuff, and it is about the progression, as you said earlier. Yeah. But with the, the three matches, the three points ahead, the, the yeah. three games in hand, the, yeah. the cup final to come as well, it's, it all adds up, doesn't it? Yeah, I, 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 we, the, the players need to understand that how important winning is. You know, if they, if they want to play at first-team level, it is all about winning, you know, or, or there's a massive part about winning. Um, I suppose what, you know, what we also want is we want the players to perform. Um, and uh, you know, it's, I suppose fans at Deepdale want that from from the first team. So result, results are important, um, definitely. But you know, we, we we concentrate on the performance and the individual progression. Um, but as the players progress into first team, they need to understand how to win games, and that that's what's been really pleasing this this year. You know, players have managed games. Um, we saw a game in the in the semi final of the cup where you know we 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 scored the winner you know a couple a couple of minutes to go and the players you know managed the game really well so you know that that's part of their development as well and just finally in terms of managing the players i know you've had bad luck with injuries as well yeah. across the space of the season we're going to talk to Aaron shortly about his comeback from injury and Noah knocking around but not involved how do you manage those sides of it at, at such a vital age. Yeah, obviously injuries are part of the game. Um, you know, somebody like Aaron Bennett who was you know, out for nearly a year. You know, uh, with an ACL injury. Uh, again, every credit to him. You can see today, you know, what what he's got and he's worked really hard to get to this point. Um, but you know, like I said, we've got a number of players who have picked up little knocks, and you know, that's all part of youth development as well. P players are growing and at different rates, and they might pick these little bits up. But you know, we. We've got a number of good players, as you've seen today, who can come in, even if we've got, you know, probably more of the senior academy players missing. So, um, so yeah, you know, we, it's important that those players get back as quick as they can. Um, but we have got other players who can who can fill in the gaps. Tell me about in terms of your 
come back. Well, in, in, so let's go back as far as the actual injury itself, which was a decent sized injury, obviously. How did you feel when it actually first happened? What was going through your mind? Just uh, when I'm going to be back and how I am going to be back. Like, am I going to be the same player or is it just going to change the way I am? But just thought I've got to crack on straight away, really, with it. What would the, what did the club say to you? Um, they, they were just really helpful straight away with the surgery. I got it really quick. I was in straight away. I was in with the uh, was in in pre season, and the first team staff were in also, so they were a big help towards getting back to progressing. I started off trying to lift my own leg was was a tough one, and then with bending it, and then just the walking patterns, and just then it just gradually once you just got each stage, it just got quicker and quicker. And, before you knew it, you were back out on the pitch running. So, I know it was a long time since I was 18 years old, and probably can't remember that far back. But I know you, you sort of you, you sort of fearless because you don't know what's coming. Were there any times that you did have any sort of doubts or worries? No, but then again, yeah, because just like I said, when coming back playing, you you oh, it's always in your mind: are you going to be the same player, or just how are you going to how's it going to be? When I started running, it was it was all fine, and then when you got the ball work involved, then it just it just got better and better after that, really. So that comeback game when you, I think you came on, didn't you, for the, for your first game back? Yeah, you played 45 started, minutes. Yeah, yeah. Um, how did that make you feel? It it was just good to just to get out there, play an actual competitive game, and just to be back with the team. It was just felt great. The manager said this week in terms of there's opportunities. For the young lads coming through, you, you're part of that as well. How do you, how did you react to that? Did you hear him say that? Yeah, did I you? have seen so it. So how did yeah. that make you feel? It just gives you like a a goal, as such, or just a, a target to try and get his like attention, and then just try and get involved as much as you can and just keep performing. We always know when we come down here that their eyes are going to be on you and just just perform, just do you and just see how you get on. And how do you think you've been getting on? Since I've been back, I say I've been doing all right and just take game by game and just see how we go. And what about the lads around you? It's even better. Just everyone's performing. That's why we're doing so well in the league, cup, just unbeatable at the moment, really. Nick has not told me to tell you, but I think he made it quite clear to me about the focus is not necessarily on whether you're going to win the league or win the cup or not. It's on the next game and, and progressing. So, are you feeling that, that progression again now? Do you feel like every game you're coming back, you're having those steps up again? Yeah, just you learn it. You're learning something each day from every game. So, just got to keep moving forward with them. And how nice would it be if you could have that league winner's medal and a, and a cup winner's medal at the end of the season? Even better to say. I've only come back for been back a month now. So to have one of them at the end of the season would be, be nice. And what are the more of whales or sharks? Sharks. <laughs> <laughs> and as you heard mentioned in that chat with Nick, the Meet the Manager night that was at Dibla, you can watch it. You can watch it all again at your own leisure. It's on the YouTube channel. It's up, where is it? Wherever you click on it, have a look for it. Press North End, official YouTube. Same place you found this, Meet the Manager. You'll find it. Let's continue listening to the manager while we're at it because we go to Derby County this weekend. Here are the thoughts of Ryan Lowe. Yeah, no, I'm really looking forward to it. I think, uh, especially, you know, Derby County, they're fighting for their lives. They've done extremely well to, to get the points they've already got. Um, for me, they're one of the better footballing teams in the division, how they play and what they do and the setup. Uh, you know, so we can't, you know, think, oh, just because the bottom of the league, the, the bottom of the league through no fault of the players and, and the management staff, definitely. Uh, and they're really giving it a good go to try and escape that. They've, they've been fantastic from start to finish. So we're definitely not going to. Think it's going to be easy, but I'm really looking forward to going to, to, to the stadium. Yeah, you know, there'll be a few of our fans traveling, uh, they'll have a packed house there because they're, they're rallying them through, supporting them. And it's been a while, as you said, it's been two and a half weeks yet, so just to get back out there with the lads is, is definitely looking forward to it. You've touched on Derby as a team there already, but given the circumstances, how impressed have you been with their season? Yeah, very impressed. I think they've been probably, you know, if Wayne does manage to keep them up and he should be given manager of the year, certainly because of what he's done and how he's done it. Not just Wayne, but as, as, as coaching staff as well. They've all galvanised together to try and 
you know, was gave it that. I think they played, maybe Wayne's took the pressure off and to say, well, look, you've got the points, that, that, you know, you just got to now get on with it and try and get as many points as you possibly can. As I said, it's through no fault of his and his staff and his players, but what he is trying to do is he's trying to make sure that he can, you know, fight this deduction they've had and try and stay in the championship. And I think after Saturday, look, I wish them all the best. I hope he can, he can do it because it'll be a real fairy tale, won't it? It'll be a, a story that's never been heard of. Uh, and I will be, you know, hoping he can do it after, after Saturday. Right, I know they say take one game at a time, but we also know what the game after the next game is, so you'll allow us this one. I'm not going to say it is, you know who it is, but we have an exclusive interview here on the weekend warm up with former Preston North End manager Simon Grayson, who will talk about Derby days, Tommy Clark, who did something at some point in some time, but we'll start off our chat with Simon Grayson by talking about if he misses management. Uh, yeah, one part of me on a Saturday misses it all and, and the build-up to the games, of course it does, but sometimes it's nice to give you opportunity to go and do other things as well. I've obviously watched Joe, my lad, play quite a bit as well at Barrow over the last few months as well. Um, watching different games, sampling different sort of uh, environments within the football industry, speaking to like technical directors and just getting sort of a, a feel of something that maybe what the future might hold for me. I think I still think that I want to go back to work and be a manager because I still think I'm good enough, young enough and got uh, the, the uh, attitude still to be successful. Um, so time will tell with that one uh, if it comes along. I've actually been offered a couple of jobs since I left Fleetwood, which is not what I want. I didn't think the right ones to do at that particular time. So we will see what uh, the future holds in the next few months. Fingers crossed for you. Just in terms of... I know we're going to talk about the Derby match uh, in a few moments' time, but just in general, how do you look back at your time at North End? Absolutely loved it. It was uh, it was an incredible time, and it went so quickly. I remember the first conversation I had with Peter, and he asked me to come, and I said, "Look, I'm not prepared to come while you still got a manager." He says, "Well, if you agree to come, we won't have a manager." <laughs> I had a conversation with David Moyes. I was actually in Dubai at the time because I'd been I'd left Huddersfield about two weeks before and um, spoke to him for about half an hour. Tried to reverse the charges, but you know what Moyes is like. He wouldn't uh, he wouldn't uh, accept them. <laughs> and and from from the day that I walked in the football club, made really welcomed by the players, the supporters, all the staff. And that time just flew by from keeping the team up that first season to obviously then get to the playoffs semi-final against Rotherham, which was a disappointment, but a, a progression of the football club that I wanted to do, which obviously accumulated in uh, the playoff final and the hoodoo that had been broken after, what, 10 attempts, I think, was it? And then stabilising the club in the championship. It was it was a great time and I loved working with everybody, supporters. And, uh, yeah, I can really, really proud of what I've achieved, but really the, the relationship that I had with the, everybody connected with the club still. The amount of relief, I think, that came out, possibly even by half time when we were almost there, but we also had in the back of our mind all the other ones as well. Is, was that the highlight for you? And, and did you feel that hoodoo going, going to Wembley that day? How did you get rid of it? Well, it's funny because I was just talking to this uh, on this subject to somebody last week and they were saying, well, how did you deal with it? Because of the, the previous records that uh, Preston had had and, and I think it was the they held the record for the most number of defeats in the playoffs, which everybody was reminding me about. Um, but I said, records are there to be broken. So I use that as a positive. And I, I certainly try to use my experience of being there a couple of times as a manager previously and, and as a player as well, and, and drew that all together. And it was a big motivation, obviously, after the Colchester defeat that we, we could still have this second chance. And I just kept on emphasising to the players all the time was, if you're going to get promoted at any particular time, doing it at Wembley is the best thing to do and the best way to do it. And even at 3-0, you're still a little bit sceptical because you're thinking, oh, could what could happen? But you get the fourth goal and it's probably the, the longest period of time that I've had during a match where I could actually stand on that touchline and enjoy it and actually pick out one or two people in the crowd that I saw and... Uh, Forget about the game to a certain extent a little bit because we were we were in cruise control and and uh, certainly waited for that final whistle to uh, to uh, sound out and then we could celebrate. I think that will probably be most people's most memorable moment. The other one probably 
came on a night game in the League Cup, um, involved Tommy Clark a little bit as well. But before you'd got to that point, in terms, obviously, you were a former player there, you were a former manager there. In terms of when you got offered the job, you mentioned about Peter and the chats that you have. Did that ever come up? It maybe it's in your mind or in your heart or anything that any sort of conflict? I think I think I probably had the conversation with Peter once. I said, look, how do you think it will go down given that I played and managed Blackpool, like you said? He says, look, it won't be an issue. You win football matches at any football club, you become successful and people like even more so. And and I mean, I speak to one or two people about this at the time and they says, well, you could have been, you're not exactly following in somebody who's left the football club that was very sort of well liked as well. So you could have been the second most hated football person in football and still be liked. So I took that as a positive and I just decided that uh, it was it's, it's football, it happens. And it doesn't matter who I work for who or who I've played for or against. My biggest team, my team is Leeds. But every time I pl- um, played against them or when I was playing or managed against them, I always wanted to beat them. And it's who I worked for at that particular time that I will give 100, 100% and more, to be fair, to the to be successful. And and that's how I looked on it, that I wanted to be successful. And uh, what had happened in the past was the past. It was the future that I was looking forward to. So you played yeah. in, in derby matches. You managed in derby matches as well. What is the feeling like as you get nearer and nearer to kick off? Well, I think with this one as well, people from the outside don't realise the intensity of this game, do they? The rivalry, it goes back a long, long way and it is really intense. It's a little bit like people don't realise about Blackburn Burnley, but that is one one game that people look forward to as far as um, from the from when the fixtures come out and going back years, the rivalry is so intense and this is no different. And it was the same when I was the Blackpool manager that, when we played at Deepdale and West Ulan scored to win the game, but then Brownie and um, I think it was Neil Mellon maybe scored at, at uh, Bloomfield Road. So that particular it was, game, was, yeah. lost. We, it, it was on the end of two different results, to be fair. But the build up, you, you don't need any motivation because I've been in the game long enough to know that what it means to the supporters of these games. And I think if any players were, or staff or myself, were not uh, aware of the rivalry. You only had to walk down the street and the build up to the game and the press and everything that you knew what was going to happen. And uh, it's one of anticipation, um, excitement, but also you're a little bit certainly nervous. Everybody would be because you wanted the bragging rights on the following morning. And um, from our perspective on that on that, that night, it was fantastic that it was in uh, we, we, the press and supporters were able to have the bragging rights. So where's the fine line in terms of building the lads up, but also not letting them get too carried away? How do you balance that? Yeah, I think I think one of my traits as manager is that I don't get too high or too low. And I certainly say to the players in these big games, play with your head rather than your heart. Don't let the emotion of the game ruin it for the rest of the team and supporters. You make a stupid challenge in the first minute and, um, and you get sent off and we're down to 10 minutes. So it's a difficult game for us. But on the... Side, on the other side of that, you've still got players going in for the tackles and being competitive and running and working as if you would do in any game as well. But it does have that extra little fine line that you've got to just see sometimes in the dressing room, certain individuals that you're working with. I could I could name you now the players that I would have to probably just calm down a little bit. And there'll be one or two others you're thinking, do they actually realise that this is a derby match because they're that laid back and relaxed about it? And that's your job as a manager to suss that out who who needs what and uh, how are you going to do it? Well, all right, I will do. Gans will be one that you need to calm down a little bit given <laughs> sort of how feisty he can be. John Welsh will be another one because he loves the tackle and feisty as well. Somebody like Hunts, you wouldn't know what Hunts was emotion was going to because he's so quiet and laid back as well, isn't he? So uh, there's three examples. I'm sure I could get a few more on either side of the fence. So let's take... And by the way, I've done you out to drive there as well. <laughs> Did you need calming down at any point during that game? Because it was, I mean, it was a night game as well, which I'm sure turned it up to 11. Were the, were the points where you had to go, oh, come on, Barry, let's keep it under check here? 
Not really, because that's how I'm on the touchline for every game, to be fair. But it doesn't mean to say the inner side of me is burning away and desperate to do to win the game. Because I think I think anybody sees my emotion when Tom Clark scores a goal, what it meant to me. And any time that I've been managing other clubs as well, when I scored, when the team has scored important goals, I do like the celebration and uh, I've calmed down a little bit because I can't, I'm not as mobile as I used to be. But you can see my emotions on on that particular night because it, what it meant to to the team, it meant that we were going through to the next round of the cup, but ultimately what it meant to the supporters. And also knew from a selfish perspective that I would have been held in high regard from the Preston supporters of being the manager that had uh, just knocked the, the rivals out of the, uh, the League Cup. So in terms of going into this one, um, how, do, how do you balance it up in terms of how it might go, what, what important things would need to happen, could happen? I think when you look at it, both teams have, are really well placed in the division. Ryan's come in to, to p and &E and done really well, sort of galvanised the team again and got their own real good run. Hard to beat. Um, obviously, uh, Neil Critchley at Blackpool, again, has done a good job. And uh, the one big thing that you would look from Preston's perspective is that they lost the previous game. That's probably the biggest motivation that you can have, that, Losing at uh, Bloomfield Roll 2 0 and lost quite comfortably, really giving, not really going down without a fight was was hard to bear from from what I'd heard and read about sort of a few days afterwards. So that's the biggest motivation. And I think you touched on it before that it's a game under lights as well. It's, it does make it different when it's under lights. Saturday afternoon is great because it's a traditional kickoff, but any big matches and local derby matches under the lights is, is extra special and just gives that extra little spice as well. And no, you do not win any prizes for trying to guess exactly who he wants to win the game on Tuesday night, although we both know, right? Okay, if you haven't got your tickets yet for that game, there are a limited number left, but they will stop being sold as of five o'clock on Monday. So if you haven't got them by then, you're not going to get them. And on Tuesday night, don't forget that we will be celebrating the life and legacy of Sir Tom Finney on what would have been his 100th birthday. So get along early if you're going along and catch everything on iFollow p &E if you can't. And if you haven't got a ticket for Derby County, that's also the only place that'll be able to catch the game because there are no sales on the day at Pride Park. That is it. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. Like, subscribe, fingers crossed, and just finally, come on you whites!